Hi, gang. Welcome to Class Session 2, The Nature of Research in Instructional Technology and Distance Education. The purpose of this brief presentation is to set the stage for the rest of this course's class sessions, but particularly the next three, which will address the role of theory in ITDE research, the approaches and methods employed by ITDE researchers, and identifying researchable issues in the fields of instructional technology and distance education. We'll take a broad view of ITDE research, research of which dissertations are only a portion. Let's begin with some historical perspective. Unfortunately, it's a bit of a downer. In 1995, Hannafin and Hannafin wrote that the status of research in instructional technology was not strong and wasn't likely to improve. Among the challenges were that the field was very diverse. It had no common research agenda, and its members had little interest in conducting or even reading research. Hannafin and Hannafin summarized this way. It is difficult to be both realistic and optimistic regarding the future of instructional technology research. If we continue on our present course, the field will be plagued by lack of direction, definition, and focus. IT will continue its emphasis on training practitioners, but will be unable to forge its own destiny and advance its own research. Fifteen years later, things weren't much better. Ross, Morrison, and Lowther noted that scholarly productivity seemed to be increasing. However, they also noted that concerns have been raised about the impact and quality of educational technology research. There had been a 20-year decline in the quantity of experimental studies, and the new research focuses tend to be disconnected from empirical findings obtained with older technologies and from the broader educational field in general. Today, a reasonable summary would be that some excellent work is being conducted by a relatively small number of researchers, but most instructional technologists and distance educators are uninterested in conducting or even reading research and much of the research is relatively low in rigor and is not informed by previous research. For example, we still see studies comparing the effectiveness of media, an issue that has been largely settled for 30 years. It's fair to say that ITD research has had little impact on the fields and even less on the broader field of education. In other words, not much has changed since the Hannafin's gloomy assessment 19 years ago we can aim higher. Let's consider what ITDE research can be, indeed what it is at its best. Let's begin by reminding ourselves why we conduct educational research and why it's important. When appropriately designed and conducted, it can describe how things are and why they are that way. It can allow us to make predictions about how things will be or could be. It can suggest how improvements may be made. Good quality ITDE research has many characteristics, but among the most prominent are that it is applied. It is based on theory. It is generalizable. It employs a variety of media, and it varies greatly in scope. Let's talk about each of these in turn. At the core of our understanding of research and its purpose is this. We conduct research primarily not to solve problems, but to gain new knowledge and answer questions. However, instructional technology and distance education are applied fields. Virtually all research in instructional technology has an application. Hence, it is applied research. Again, studies yield findings we can apply, and in so doing, we lift the fields of instructional technology and distance education from their origins in craft to something closer to a profession. Research is normally guided by theory. Theories identify commonalities in otherwise isolated phenomena and 
enable us to make predictions and control phenomena. As Moore and Kearsley have noted, conducting research without the help of theory is like embarking on a trip without a map. Among the theories used by ITD researchers are theories of learning and cognition, theories of distance education, diffusion theory, communication theory, and many others. Next week, in Class Session 3, we'll take a closer look at the role of theory in ITDE research. Neither instructional technology nor distance education is a hard science like, say, chemistry. But our research is guided by the scientific method. These steps should sound familiar. We begin by formulating a hypothesis. Then we make deductions of observable consequences of the hypothesis, followed by testing of the hypothesis. Late in the term, Dr. Simonson will return to the theme of our personal transition from practitioners to scientists. The value of any study is increased when its findings can be applied outside the environment in which it was conducted. So, ITDE researchers aim for the highest level of generalizability possible. Generalizability tends to be highest for quantitative, experimental studies, and lowest for qualitative studies. This is not to say that we should always choose the former over the latter. Rather, as Ross, Morrison, and Reeser note, it is often best to choose a mixed method approach, one that brings to a study the strengths of complementary approaches. ITDE researchers work in teams, conducting research on a national or even international scale. They work individually in a single community or even a single classroom. Their studies may have hundreds of, or thousands of subjects, each completing a survey, or a handful of subjects, each being interviewed. ITDE research is not limited to a particular approach. Rather, ITDE researchers employ a variety of approaches and methods, experimental, quasi-experimental, and non-experimental, quantitative and qualitative, studies with human subjects and studies without. We'll take a closer look at methods of ITDE research in Class Session 4. The fields of instructional technology and distance education are relatively young. While each has accumulated a substantial literature, there is much we don't know. As we will see in the coming weeks, there are so many promising topics for research and so many ways to conduct that research. In spite of how it might feel when one is casting about for a dissertation topic, the challenge is not so much finding a worthy uh, topic for research, but of winnowing the overwhelming number of topics and identifying within them researchable issues. The topic, by the way, of Class Session 5. Thanks, gang, for taking the time to watch and listen to this presentation. I hope you found it useful, if not necessarily interesting. To receive credit for having endured it, please post your brief reflections and any questions you may have in the CS2 discussion forum. As always, feel free to contact me via email, or even better, by telephone.